Have you ever opened your freezer and then gotten what you need out of it and then close it and immediately remember that you needed to grab one more thing? But then you go to open the freezer and it's really hard to open. For some freezers like this one, it's almost impossible to open it right after you shut it. Unless you stick your fingers in the sill here and give it an air gap, then it can open easily. Why is this the case? Is there a little vacuum pump that senses when the door's open and then quickly sucks out the air inside to suction the door closed? Well, no, there isn't. If you unplug the freezer completely and immediately do the same experiment, you'll see that even with no power, the freezer door suction shut after you use it. It seems like there's a slight vacuum inside the freezer right after you shut it. So what's causing the suction? Well, if you remember, there's a strong relationship between the temperature of a gas like air and the volume or pressure of that air. So when you open your freezer, especially a standing freezer like this one, all of the cold air that was in there is more dense than the warm air around it. So it falls out of the freezer and gets replaced with the warmer air from the room. But when you close the door, that warm air quickly cools down to the temperature of the freezer. This drop in temperature also drops the pressure, so the atmosphere outside the door pushes on this full area with a lot of force. Okay, so I have my standing freezer in my garage here. Let's see how much the pressure drops when I open the door and then close it again. And also, I'm gonna be powering my whole experiment today using the Anchor Solix electric generator. You can see that my freezer is plugged into the generator and it's easily running it. Right now it's pulling 143 watts to run the compressor. I'll tell you a little bit more about this later on. So I'm gonna stick this pressure gauge inside the freezer and let's see how much it drops. So for some reason, I didn't measure any drop in pressure. I read 12.2 PSI the whole time, but I can confirm that it's normal hard to open it, but then when I close it and immediately try to open it, it takes considerably more force to open it. Even when I try in another freezer, my main freezer inside my house, it still doesn't change pressure. So what's going on here? Well, first let's confirm that it actually does take more force to open the door when you had just barely opened it. In order to do that, I'm just gonna be using a regular scale here, and then I'm gonna push on the door handle with this stick. Let's see how much force it takes to open the door when it's just been sitting for a long time. Around 15 pounds. Okay, now let's have the door open, and then I'm gonna close it and immediately measure it. Get it nice and open, and close it. Holy cow, 45 pounds. <laughs> it took 45 pounds to open it. So that's a change of 30 pounds, which seems like a lot. So why weren't we able to measure the pressure difference inside of the refrigerator? To generate that force, you don't actually need a large pressure difference. For example, this door is five feet by 30 inches which means it's around 1,800 square inches. So to create a 30 pound force on the door, all we would need is around 0 0.016 pounds per square inch of pressure difference. So with this pressure gauge, we just weren't able to pick up that minute change in pressure right when I closed the freezer door. Now in general, when you cool a gas, you should get around 0.3 pounds per square inch pressure difference for every 10 degree decrease in temperature. So that means if our average air temperature for this freezer went down by just 10 degrees when I closed it, that would generate around 540 pounds force that I need to open the door again. Now obviously it doesn't take that much force to open the door. That's because manufacturers put a tiny little tube that connects the inside air to the outside air. So it equilibrates the pressure between the two. Now it takes a little bit of time to do that, especially because there's a large volume of air. So right for a second, right when you close it, it does generate a strong force, but then it equilibrates. So now the question is how low of a pressure can we get with a quick drop in temperature? So in order to test this, we need to cool something down really fast. I have a stopper with a tube connected to it and I'm gonna put it on my test tube, then connect it to a pressure gauge. So let's see how much the pressure drops when I put this in the liquid nitrogen. Three, two, one. Well, it's already dropping. Minus 0.2 atmospheres already. Whoa, minus 0.4. Holy cow. Minus 0.6 atmospheres. So we're at 0.4 atmospheres total pressure right now. 
And then as it heats back up, the pressure is going to increase. So in this case, we held a constant volume and we saw the pressure change. But we can actually see the volume change when I put this in the liquid nitrogen. Now what we're simulating here is just the ideal gas law. You can find simulators like this online where you can change the temperature and pressure or hold the volume constant or hold the pressure constant and see how everything changes. <laughs> see how it just sucks in all the air to here. And then as it heats back up, the pressure increases again. And you can see it pushing the volume of the syringe to be a larger volume. But the ideal gas law isn't perfect to use for this experiment because we forgot one thing. I was getting a small amount of condensation of oxygen in the tube there, so the pressure decreased a little bit more than it should. So the ideal gas law doesn't take into account condensation. So it doesn't take into account the attractive forces between molecules. It just treats them like bouncing balls bouncing all around. But once you take condensation into account, then you can get some extreme changes in pressure really quickly with just a slight change in temperature. For example, if you can fill a soda can completely with water vapor, then all you need to do to decrease the pressure by almost one whole atmosphere is to slightly decrease the temperature by putting it in some ice. You can see as soon as I do this, all of the water vapor condenses into liquid water, so the volume decreases quickly. Basically, the outside pressure from the air just crushes the can. So changes in volume by temperature alone are kind of cool and they do have a lot of effects in our daily life, but to get some major changes in volume, you need a phase change. Basically, you need to turn a gas into a liquid or a liquid into a gas, and then you get a huge change in pressure. That's why I can take my three liter container of liquid nitrogen and put it underwater in a pool, and you can see that gas just pours out of it for many minutes afterwards as if I had a container of nitrogen gas pouring out. And before we end, I'd like to thank Anchor for sponsoring this video and sending me their power station, the Anchor Solix. I used this power station to power my entire video today and it worked great. Their Anchor Solix C1000 recharges to 100% in just 58 minutes. That's 27.5% faster than power stations with the same capacity. You can also charge it with the sun. It has a 600 watt solar input. It goes from zero to 100% in 1.8 hours. It has 11 ports with 1,056 watt hour capacity. It has 1,800 watt wattage output and 2,400 watt surge wattage. What I really love about it is it's small and compact. It's 15% smaller than the industry average. It has long lasting battery technology and EV class LFP batteries with a 10 year lifespan. So you can have 3000 charge cycles and you even get smart temperature control. It has ultra durable industrial grade components which guarantee a five time longer lifespan and a unibody drop proof design. What's really cool is you can also control it with the app via Wi-Fi or Bluetooth connection. So you can check real time status and remote control the power output. I can actually turn off the lights with my app now. <laughs> Turn it back on. <laughs> That's so cool. You can also double the capacity to 2,112 watt hours with an expansion battery. So if you want to try out the Anchor Solix, now's your chance because for the October Prime Day, they have a 25% discount on the C1000. So you can click the link in my description to get yours today. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you learned something. If you did, remember to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, and we'll see you next time.